Hey Jonesy Babes and Anonymous Jonesy Babes, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk about the conversation between Ernesto and Dre, and these are the phone calls that happened on June 15, 2023 and June 28, 2023 child oh lord hon this is a lot this is a lot between these two okay but before i get right on into it i want to address <laughs> one of my jonesies now she's cool people you know that's my home girl but honey i have to share what she told me she said girl leave dre alone okay that's her pool bear <laughs> Now, you guys know that Dre has fans, and I'm sure Nesto has fans. We already know that. But yeah, honey, she was like, mm -mm, not too much on Dre, honey. I was like, okay, with your little country self. But anyway, let's continue. So, um, Nesto said he got his confirmation from Shirley about their relationship. Shirley said the jail stuff um, isn't her. Um, he said he told Shirley about getting a divorce and she um she said she wasn't ready for all that at the moment. Now, if my mind serves me correctly, I I know she said she didn't want to be forced to any into anything, right? Okay, that's what I heard. She didn't want to be forced to anything. She didn't say they were over. I never heard Shirley say they were over, they were done, she was getting a divorce. All I heard Shirley say was she didn't want to be forced into anything and she need time to think. Now, I really do hope after all of this and all the phone calls and all the video calls that came out, I really do hope Shirley, you know, we're going to say Mother Mother Strawberry, I hope she don't backslide and, you know, get with him. But if she does, it's kind of weird because she could lose her job. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. But she did say she didn't want to be forced into anything and that she need her time. But he's talking to Dre and telling him, like, oh, yeah, it was it was confirmed that they're not together. And I think what Nesto wants, he want her to say that so he could tell people, well, she left me. You know, um, she said it was over. He want an excuse. There's, there's something behind that. Okay, and if somebody like Nesto, you can't trust him. So Dre told Nesto, um, he been down this road three or four times. Okay, and it took him back to the time when he was dealing with Tracy, and that took him all the way back to the '90s and the 2000s. He said he never heard Shirley talk or act like that, and Shirley's demeanor is different, and she could be getting, you know, she could be tired. And she have a right to be tired. You know, I agree with Dre on that. Shirley does have a right to be tired. Okay. Dre, um, and I feel like Dre don't put that phone down. Dre was ear hustling on the other end, baby, because he know too much. He know everything that Shirley said, what Nesto said. Baby was on that phone ear hustling. So he never put that phone down, child. Mm. <laughs> he heard everything. Ooh, Dre nosy I mean I know they was talking on your phone but um, when you say you gonna put the phone down put the phone down over there ear hustling child but anyway uh, Shirley kept stressing that she didn't have any money and this is all coming from Dre now she didn't have any money Dre said Nesto handled it well because he would have handled it differently and the way Dre was talking on this phone call today, baby, he was talking big mess. I was like, uh-uh, listen to old Dre here. I mean, he was just talking big mess. Dre said people could be in her ear, you know, in Shirley's ear. As in, you know, as they should, as they should, because she's too old for that mess. She's too old for that. She is too old to be going through the things that she is going through. You know what I'm saying? She is knocking on seventy's door. Why is she going through this? He was with her for 10 years. Okay? And was doing all sorts of craziness. So she's tired. 
She's tired. And if she doesn't trust another man, blame it on Nesto. Okay? But anyway, and Dre, <laughs> Dre said friends are definitely in her ear. He doesn't think it's another man. And of course, Nesto going to say he not worried about that. Of, I know you're not because you wasn't worrying about her uh, being with any man because you was out there doing what you was doing. So, of course, you're not worrying about it. Baby, Trey, Dre, Dre is talking mad shit. Like, but you know what? He knows Nesto the best. That's his best buddy, honey. That's his best friend. That's his ace boom coon. Okay? Now, Dre was telling Nesto that Shirley never mentioned... Um, you know, what her girlfriends be saying or, you know, or paying her daughter rent. You know, he, she never mentioned any of that. Why would she? Why would she? You know, if she's paying her daughter rent and if she could afford to pay her rent and her daughter rent, that's her daughter. Of course, she's going to make sure her daughter has a place to stay because she has grandchildren. If she can do it, then what's the problem? You know what I'm saying? Um... She said she was just tired of all the jail stuff. And I can dig it. I really can. I can dig it. Nobody wants to go through all that. Nobody wants to be waiting on somebody, putting money on their books, looking for a lawyer. Nobody wants to do all that. It's tiring. So she did what she had to do. And I'm I'm and I'm here for it. I am here for it. Um, Nesto said dealing with him ain't cost her nothing that's a lie buddy that's a whole lie what you mean it didn't cost cost you anything she paid for your lawyer boo okay the houses that you got she got evicted from it cost her a lot you cost her everything she lost everything because of you hmm but of course he would never take accountability for that he, he just wouldn't Nesto said that everybody was leeching off of Shirley. Her businesses have flopped, talking about her candles and stuff. Okay, why did you have to put out that her businesses flop in the candles? Okay, yeah, it happens. It happens. And you were leeching off of her too. Oh, but you want to be the main character to leech off of Shirley. You didn't want nobody else getting nothing. It had to be all you. I see. I get it now. But still, you didn't have to talk about her businesses flopping. Like, okay, some businesses are going to do well and some aren't. She took a chance. At least she took a chance, right? Anyway, now, <laughs> Dre put it out there that he's been through this with Martha. Dre said he's just a man in a jumpsuit. Well, he didn't say the man part. He said the N-word. You know what I'm saying? He just a, a, a ninja in a jumpsuit. That's what he said. Now, Dre also said that Shirley isn't one of the ones you could put... Now, listen to this, guys. Because when I heard that, I was like, wait a minute. What? I had to... I had to rewind it back, baby. I did it like two or three times to make sure I heard what I heard. He said, Shirley isn't one of the ones you could put on the bus and turn the video camera on, okay? Put on the cowboy boots, go to Home Depot and get a dog chain. What in the freaky dicky is going on here? I know you guys heard that. Come on now. Let me know in the comment section you guys heard that. I know you guys heard that and I want to know how you feel about that. Let me know. Let me know how you feel about that because I'm like, wait a minute, what did he say? Shirley is not one of the ones to put on you put on the bus and turn on the video camera okay put on the cowboy boots go to home depot and get a dog chain <sighs> lord have mercy mm. let me tell you something guys today after listening to dre and nesto my head was just hurting i had to eat some lunch and lay down for a while because oh my god those two and the way they talk i felt like i was in a twilight zone now, he going to say, Dre going to tell Nesto that it surely sounded like she was with some, she was around some people, you know, that she was uncomfortable talking on the phone because she kept saying, yeah, mm, yeah, you know, maybe she didn't want to just, maybe she didn't want to talk. She could have been right there by herself and maybe she didn't want to talk. You know, it's, it's, mm. 
So Dre started talking about, you know, being in the woods and Camille and Tracy talking about his whole little life story um, that Tracy gave up on him at the door and she let another man move in. Baby, didn't you mention five years? She tried to hold you down, but honey, nobody, nobody is obligated to hold you or anybody else down. Nobody. If they get tired of holding you down, making visits, putting money on your books or whatever you got going on, they have every right to move on. And she moved on. She got over you and got under somebody else and you couldn't stand it. That's how that went, Dre. You couldn't stand it. So that's why you was out there in the woods acting crazy. Okay. You know, it's like jailbirds. They always want you to stop your life and wait for them and be there for them. You get what I'm saying? They always want that. And then when they get out, they start acting a fool and forget everything that you've done for them. Money on books, commissary, all that kind of the phone calls. None of that stuff is cheap. None of that stuff is cheap. Child. Honey child, honey child, honey child. One of these days, I'm going to tell you my little story about my little jail boyfriend, honey. 16 years old. He was 21. I met him at the bus stop when I was going home from school. I'm going to just tell you all right now. It's real quick. And he was cute. You know, he was uh, he was Guyanese, but he was like an Indian Guyanese. I was, he, mm, he was cute. Nice, like, jet black hair. It was mad straight. You know, beautiful complexion. So, you know, I was 16. I was just talking to him. He knew how old I was. He sure did. But what I didn't know, (laughs) that he was out there in them streets. Because when he got locked up, he got locked up for murder. And I went to visit him on Rackets Island one time. And I said, buddy, I am not coming back here. This is not, this is not it. This is not it. So, yeah, but we didn't do anything. We didn't, you know, it was no intercourse or anything like that because he told me, he said he didn't want to, listen to this, guys. He told me he didn't want to enter me, but he wanted to do some things to me to make me feel good, but he wasn't ready to enter me. And, you know, my little young ass was like, all right, well, if we ain't got to, like, do nothing and you can find other ways to make me feel nice, okay, child, I, I look back on that time and I'm like... I was just so stupid. <laughs> I was so I was just so dumb. But anyway, he had no business talking to me, and I had no business talking to him. But I'm glad things didn't go further. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, he was he got locked up for murder, honey. And I was like, bye bye. I am not singing this jailbird tune with you, honey. No. So I moved on, and that was that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not about me. It's about Dre and Nesto. I get it. Y'all didn't want to hear that, but I thought I was Shia. So um, Dre said, Shirley knew what was going on. So when he kept saying Shirley knew, Shirley knew, Shirley knew, what did she know? What did she know? He said she knew um, she was at the grand opening and out there at the house. But what else did Shirley know? Let me know in the comment section. Do you guys think that she knew his lifestyle, um, what he was doing? Because I was looking at comments, honey, and people said that, yeah, Shirley's not an angel. She knew exactly what was going on with Nesto. If people think she didn't, they are fool. Well, honey, Mother Strawberry, what did you know? Because I want to know. Mm-hmm. Sure do, Mother Strawberry. What do you know about Mr. Nesto? All right, so that was that call. Now, let's move on to Ernesto and Dre's call, June 28th, 2023. This is the phone call. Okay, so Nesto is telling Dre that he can't talk to Miles or Keisha, right? Keisha is the one that's um that has mental health issues. And she was um putting, you know, things in Miles' head. He asked if Dre still had the video that he sent to him of Keisha having an episode. Now, here's my thing. In this video call, we see how Nesto really works because he loves picking up a cell phone and recording folks. 
He loved doing that. Okay. And Dre said, I don't have those calls. He has the calls. You know, he has the videos of him with the, you know, the buzz and the barbershop and stuff, but he doesn't have the videos of Keisha. And I wouldn't keep that mess anyway. So Nesto told Dre that Sheridan went down to the police station and was telling the police things that had nothing to do with his case or, you know, the forgery case and was telling all types of stuff. Now, he said he put Miles out and recorded her too. Nesto also said he put Sheridan out because she was disrespecting her mother. So I guess he put Miles out and Sheridan together, out together. Now, if I got it mixed up, let me know in the comment section, okay? Because it seemed like Dre was having a hard time following Ernest when he was telling the story, you know, when he was telling him what was going on. Now, Dre said that Nesto bought her cards and other stuff so he so dre basically saying that nesto had bought sheridan a hummer okay and other stuff and that her boyfriend had messed up the hummer see i didn't know all of this i, I guess you guys know about it let me know in the comment section because i didn't know about that but when i go look on his instagram it seems like they had a very good relationship they were cool he was even calling her daughter you know so, things got sour somewhere along the line, right? Um, Nesto has Sonya to text Dre. See, he didn't know that number was Sonya's number, so he didn't really pay no mind. He thought it was one of those, you know, bill collectors or whatever. He say, or spam. He said he didn't really pay no mind. Uh, Dre and Nesto talked about the ankle monitor and he wasn't indicted and stuff like that. And it just seems like Dre is confused about these charges, right? So, okay. Now, we find out a little bit more information about Keisha because, you know, of course, we know she's the one with mental health issues and that she was homeless, all right? And she was in the streets screaming and hollering according to Nesto because he has it on video miles was out there with sheridan that's what i got now he said as for keisha he got the counsel to go out there with him because she didn't want to go back go back to atlanta he also has footage this is it is he also has footage of him and her you know well of him talking to her grandmother sorry about that he yeah he has footage of him talking to her grandmother about getting her some help. Why would you want to sit there and talk to somebody's grandparent about getting them some help? You are the parent. Why don't you just do it? And why do you have to film every dang one thing? He loved that camera, boy. He loved that camera. He loved that camera. Dre says Sheridan doesn't want Nesto with Shirley. And Sher Sheridan is still doing the same thing, right? Now, Dre also said that Shirley's brother, when they was living in California, he hasn't paid rent in 30 years. Hmm. And that um, when they was talking about Shirley again, Nesto said his counsel took her out to eat for whatever reason. At some point, I started drifting away from the conversation because it was just too much. It was too much. Now, I was like looking around on you know, the internet to see if I could find out anything about Sheridan, about, you know, her and her mother relationship. And I know that she don't, didn't like her mom because of Nesto, but I didn't know that allegedly she, Sheridan hated her mom because she left her with her grandmother and Sheridan never forgave her for that. So I didn't know they had some deep history like that. You know? But you know, like, you know, let me tell you something. That's a conversation that Shirley and Sheridan are going to have to have. They probably had that conversation. And they probably are, you know, they reconciled. They probably are over it. But I can understand it. You get what I'm saying? I can understand it. I really can. You know, thank God for grandmothers, right? 
thank God for grandmothers in a way. I know I, my grandmother, she saved me from a lot of different things. I miss that lady with all my heart. I miss her so much, so much. You know, I lost my mother when I was 16. My mother was 30, 33 when she passed away. She was 33 and I was like 16, get ready to turn 17. And I didn't know how to deal with nothing. You know, I had to figure out life on my own and everything. But I had my grandmother, you know, and I had my aunts and some of my uncles. I had people, but they had their own lives they was dealing with. And I was the oldest girl, so I had to, like, figure out life on my own. Mm. Baby, my life, I could tell you a lot about my life. I really can. The stuff that I've been through with my mom, you know, my mom had epilepsy, but she also had mental health illness and depression. And back then they didn't diagnose, you know, people, they didn't diagnose her or anything, but we knew something was wrong. And, um, boy, oh boy, it was like a roller coaster. One minute you up, one minute you down, round and round, side to side. You know, she was a, a sweet person one minute and she was hell the next. She'll give you her last, but then she'll cuss you out afterwards. You know, you just never knew, you know, how to be around her. And for me to go through that at a young age, is like, mm, the only peace I had was when she would take her medicine for her epilepsy and go to sleep, child. I guess that's why I had imagine, imaginary friends and everything because I was the only kid at that time because I was really little when she was going through that. But, you know, you know, you don't understand things until you get older. But I miss them. I miss my mother and I miss my grandma. So your girl been through some things, okay? Your girl been through some things. But anyway, back on Sheridan and her mom, um... I think things are good with them now, and I'm happy. I'm happy about that. And then another thing why Nesto didn't like Sheridan, because I feel like Sheridan knew he was full of shit. Oh, yeah. I, I think Sheridan caught on that he wasn't who he, you know, said he was. And she just saw her mother, you know, underneath him and doing everything that he said and didn't care, didn't ask questions because he was the man of the house. But Sheridan knew it was something about Nesto she didn't like. And she was trying to get her mother from that. Okay. So she was, she, she had a reason to do what she did. And at one point, Sheridan and Dion was close. But you know, that's a little Nesto. He's going to follow in his father's footsteps. Okay, but anyway, you guys, let me know in the comment section. How did you feel about Dre and Nesto's conversation? Honey, that first phone call was <laughs> was something else. Okay, Dre was just talking. Let me tell you, they can't say women gossip because, honey, these two roosters, they were gossiping. Okay, they were gossiping. Fred Sanford and Grady were gossiping. Okay. Anyway, you guys, I will talk to you guys in the comment section. You guys have a great day.